we know that XPS spectra composed of large number of peaks. So the number of peaks basically depends on the chemical environment. The second important parameter is the physical and chemical state of the sample. And the last one is the instrumental contributions. So this means that the number of peaks basically depend on these three parameters. For example, this is the standard XPS spectra from lead and we know lead is a heavy element so physically it is heavy elements so we can observe large number of peaks you see these are basically photoelectron peaks and these two are basically OJ peaks there are also possibility of other type of peaks such as satellite peaks x-ray ghost peaks shake up shake up peaks but in today's video I will only talk about the photoelectron peaks that how we will identify how we will recognize that whether this is basically photoelectron peaks or OJ peaks or satellite peaks. So how we will recognize the photoelectron peaks? Photoelectron peaks are also called sharp peaks. Once we see sharp peaks, so this means that this will be from photoelectrons here. If you look into the OJ peaks, the OJ peaks are not sharp. So this means this is the first sign that when we see sharp peaks, so this means that it will be from photoelectrons here. We will read here. These are the most intense, mean also intense, mean high intensity and narrowest peaks observed in XPS spectra. And we know that basically this peak is basically the convolution. Convolution is basically mean mixing up two or more than two things. So this means that this peak is basically the convolution uh, from the width of the X-ray one parameter the second is basically the lifetime of the hole because we know that when we shine x-ray on the core electron so this electron basically uh, emit from the sample and here we have hole here we have hole so that lifetime of the hole and the instrumental contribution these three contribution basically make the peak here and this is basically we call convoluted peak so once we want to deconvolute it so we have to take the high resolution uh, XPS spectra so these are the first sign that the photoelectron peaks will be intense and it will be narrowest these photoelectron peaks basically generated uh, from a very very thin region here uh, about uh, 10 nanometer this is the region basically where the electron basically do not make an elastic collision here the electron basically make elastic collision and we know that in elastic collision no loss of kinetic energy so this means that these electron 100 percent reach to the detector and we get the photo electron peaks these are basically from this thin region here this simply means that these photo electrons basically generated from this very thin region less than 10 nanometer region and we get photoelectron peaks another important characteristics or property of the photoelectron peaks are the less intense peak the photoelectron peaks but the less intense peak at a higher binding energy usually wider approximately one to four electron volt than the peak at lower binding energy for example this is the this is the binding energy here and x x is in this from, from 0 to 1400 or 1200 electron volt so if you look into here the the the, the low intense peak mean the low intensity peak at higher binding energy so here it will be wider is compared to this uh, high intense peak at low binding energy so this is this is also another identification uh, if you are uh, taking xps for insulating material uh, or conductor so this means that insulating material basically shows wider peaks than the uh, photoelectron peaks from conductor. So this simply means that if you are talking about the insulator, so the insulator, the, the peaks, the full width half maxima will be higher is compared to the uh, uh, is compared to the conductor here. This is another identification for photoelectron peaks.